looks like he's coming our way. Hopefully we can scare him away. So, I was going to go for a motorbike adventure somewhere, but then it's pissed rain like you wouldn't believe for an hour. So I ended up going and sweating my ass off. I don't know how long, a couple hours anyway. It's dead and I'm not cooling down and uh, I'm sweating like crazy still. But anyway, uh, interesting, interesting note about this spot right here. A couple years ago, with the year that I almost died, when I was, what I was trying to do was I was trying to, I wanted to, leave home, head to the west, and come home from the east. Eventually with no plan to scare the shit out of myself. I guess I got more than I bargained for, I just about bit it. But anyways, I was trying to meet locals as I traveled. And uh, I met these Thai guys, and they took me fishing. We got up early in the morning, they picked me up, we would fish, and they took me here to these rocks. These guys were real keen, avid fishermen. Didn't know any English, but we figured it out. And they were casting little lures just casting rods like trout rod style, and they're casting little lures that look like a shrimp. And they caught, uh, they're catching squid, and that's what they're intending to catch. We didn't catch any like actual fish, we caught squid, it's pretty interesting. I think I'll be able to dig those pictures up and share them right here. And I think it was this night, it was that night, it was the night after fishing with them, is when I started to go down with the symptoms to that dang hemorrhagic fever when the mosquito got me. And then it was rapid decline after that. But anyway, first time I've been back here since then. So I uh, hopefully I think I've got the camera far enough down out of the way of the out of the way of the. Uh, so I think I've got the camera down far enough out of the way of the water enough. I hope we're gonna find out, right? But this is all I got right now. So let's get some voices heard. Well, let's know this. Another piece of the puzzle. Greetings, truth speaker. I am known as White Eagle and have devoted my life to understanding many of the mysteries of this world. I'm an earth worker who wants, who works with grid and ley lines or song lines as they're referred by the Australian Aboriginals. This ocean isn't too loud. I am sweating my ass off. I am an earth worker who works with grid and ley lines, or song lines as they are referred to by the Australian Aboriginals. I had written this letter to you back in August, but I have not heard it read, so here I go again. Apologies if you have read it. Also, I am writing again because I believe I may have a vital piece of information concerning how the savvy are able to move so incredibly fast, which was not included in my previous email. In her book, published in 1927, My Journey to Lhasa, Tibet, Alexandra David Neal, the first European woman to be ordained as a Buddhist monk, tells an interesting tale of seeing a man literally fly through the village. They had stopped for tea one time. They had stopped for tea at one of the tiny villages along the trail, and all of a sudden a man came literally flying through the village touching down once every few hundred yards, and in moments he was gone. Needless to say, the woman was extremely perplexed, but what she found even more perplexing was that the people of the village barely took note and went about their day. Needing to know what the bleep had just transpired, she pulled the servant girl aside and asked to explain. Upon which the girl replied, Oh, that's, that is the shaman from the next village. He's on his way to pick some medicinal herbs for a boy who is very sick, and they are very far. Therefore, he is using the fast walk. Quote, fast walk, end quote, is the ability to project oneself to any point near or far, defying gravity as you go. This, I believe, lends credence to so many reports of Sabe seemingly floating or moving at incredible speed. Another such story comes from my friend from Ottawa. At a gathering of Aikido masters in Japan, they had rented a soccer stadium. The masters of all the different schools, one 
on one side widthwise and the students on the other. As each master was introduced, the students would bow. The last master to be present was a very old fellow in a gold cloak. He was presented, the students bowed, and when they raised their heads, the old master was standing in front of them. There was a gasp of shock and amazement amongst the students. Later, when my friend asked his teacher what the bleep had just happened, he was told that the old master in the gold cloak was the head of a school which practiced what they called stepping off, which has to do with stepping off and using the rotation of the earth to one's advantage? Question mark. I believe that, as you often refer to, Steve, there are spiritual gifts that we have lost or forgotten which the Sabe have not. I think these examples could very well show how the Sabe are able to climb, run, jump, etc. the way they do. I also believe they are able to project a field of abject terror, a field in which anything would go dead silent. This goes for their ability to project the incredible stench like a skunk as well. In my first letter I told of my shaman friend who said the, that amongst his people it is said that when the Sabe will make his presence known it will be a sign of the end time. It seems to me that time is just around the corner. At the end of every age there is a battle between dark and light. It is time for humanity to put their hopes and dreams on the shelf and fight this fight if they expect to have a future at all. See what you're doing is more powerful than you know. In highest light, White Eagle. Appreciate the email. Absolutely. Appreciate your time. Uh, you know, I don't know. And I'm sweating, can you tell? Um, signs of seeing the Sabbath are a sign of the end of times. Well, that would mean that the end of times have been coming for thousands of years, though unfortunately, right? If you look back at history amongst our, our uh, First Native people in North America and the First Nations, no matter what color they are in other continents, the history of these people go back thousands of years. So that would mean everybody's anticipating doom and dread and the end of the planet for thousands of years, right? But anyway, but that's absolutely interesting that you mentioned the uh, that human being traveling in midair. And it's coincidentally, you know, I, we heard of the American serviceman who watched a man in Afghanistan walk on the ground, turn 90 degrees, and walk straight up a wall, sticking out feet to the left, head to the right, up and over the wall. Who decides to make that up, right? There is shit going on, there is skills that we are not in touch with, and it's a bit of a rip-off. Pisses me off. Obviously, if there's a chance of getting those skills, I don't think anybody would teach me, because I know what I'd do with them, right? I would clean house. I'd clean house within hours, globally. <laughs> anyway, different topic. Thank you so much for the email. You got people's wheels spinning between their ears. All right. Here we go. Thoughts regarding military personnel and Sabe. Steve, this is my first email. I do not know if this is correct email responding to the Sabe slash Bigfoot comments. I've been listening for over a year now. Mad respect for what you're doing. I grew up hunting in West Virginia, as it was a family tradition. I myself was in the military. I see the patterns you and others have questions about how the military professionals have the most fear and dread when encountering these beings. As you and your emails you read reveal that Sabe have more than hitting on trees powers. Some say they can mind speak and even take over your muscular coordination. Mind and loss of time. If these beings can do this, then why can't they instantly read your mind, background and knowledge? If they can do that, they can see your dark sides you have been through. They can see the training and experience of your past. They can see and know you had weapons training and was a warrior. Some military personnel have killed and was in battle. These beings can see this in our souls and they know and fear this because we have been in war and have had this type of training. These beings then instantly throw all their hate and fears into the unlucky military person in the woods they run into. It's simply their defense mechanism. They throw at humans when they sense this type of alpha warrior personality. It could even be a person with a negative or troubled background. I'm just looking for answers, like all the rest. Keep up your great work, Paul. You got the wheel spinner, Paul. Good one. Yeah, you gotta wonder, right? You gotta wonder if 
they are projecting what we would possibly consider our absolute absolute worst fear psychologically maybe right good chance of it but why do they do that right that's the big question why do they do that you know it's like wildlife wild animals grizzly bears everything else all they want to do is put distance between us they don't want to stand there and mind speak with us they don't want to stand there and inflict mental freaking hemorrhaging of fear and terror and they don't do that they just want to put distance between us and that's what they do simple instant done so why do these beings decide to inflict absolute terror into our souls right isn't that weird it's a it's a, uh, it's a real weird one i mean my god if i was if i had the skills these beings have would you even give humans any time do you know what i mean humans would be so dumb as f in your eyes why would you even give them 10 seconds of your time if you were that that if you outclass them that severely you know what i mean it's a lot that doesn't make sense it's starting to rain hope it doesn't like actually start absolutely torrentially downpouring or i'm in trouble with the camera here i got a backpack but I'm gonna have to put cover on this camera. Nothing like sitting on rocks without a pad. All right, here we go. What's this? Still recording? Yep. Unusual puzzle piece. Experiences from Ladybug with Sabe. February 1st, 2023. Oh, it's a recent one. Hello, Steve. I'm over 60. Oh, wait. No, no, it's not. This is, yeah, it was. It's recent. Hello Steve, I'm over 60 years of age and have had several sightings of Sabe and other occurrences that has happened to me through the years. Your, excuse me, your and other websites and people's accounts have been very helpful to me to put puzzle pieces together, especially of my own experiences. So thank you and to all you writing in. My experience with these creatures is they control memory and even consciousness. Also, when our minds have no other place to catalog these seemingly impossible, we tend to blank it out until later. Number one. My first memory is when I was preschool age in my backyard near the Mississippi River in Missouri. I remember now being in this huge hairy thing's arms. He looked like an orangutan colored hair that looked like Cousin It on what was the old The Addams Family TV show. Huge in size compared to my parents. Didn't see eyes, mouth, or nose. The hair at least about six inches in length or more that totally covered his face and body. I've since seen pictures close to what I saw. They call it a Momo. I remember my parents at first calling me and then they were just standing next to each other with their heads down, totally quiet like they were asleep standing up. The being kept wanting to put his fingers between my legs. I would wriggle away, but I really think he would put me asleep in the same way also. And as I looked at this hairy being that was holding me, I saw in his fur bugs and worms crawling around. What? I remember him putting me down in my mind, asking me to choose to go with him or my parents. He had no desire to be with something that had no desire to be with something that had bugs and worms. Ran to my parents. I was still quote asleep and end quote don't remember at this time ever having a conversation with them about the event or even afterwards this is a new one new flavor that is number two same address seen this one early in teen years looking out my parents family room window towards the river at what I thought was a black gorilla cone head walking upright across the property in the daytime until it was out of sight probably two football fields away number three also remember a couple times having fleeting glances of something staring at me outside my bedroom window in the night. This had a face unlike the first Momo experience, but would just think of my mind was would just think my mind was playing tricks on me or something and would just dismiss it. To look in my window, it had to have been at least eight feet or more. Number four. This one was when I was a young married adult in my 20s, early 1980s in the fall, early spring. The leaves are off the trees. My husband and I went to a property that was unused with anyone on it for many, many years. Totally wooded with a small creek and river not too far away in the country in Illinois. Just investigating this property. The ground totally covered in leaves from years of leaves. 
We were walking in towards the heart of the property. I remember walking onto something very soft, actually foamy-like. I looked down, but only remember seeing leaves. I told my husband, what is this? Why is this so soft that I'm standing on? And would bounce on it a little. Just couldn't figure it out. Well, we went on and I started getting pelted with little small things like cedar tree fronds or sand, or I didn't know what. But I looked down and would, wouldn't see anything on the ground. I couldn't figure out what they were and where they were coming from. All the trees around me were deciduous trees like maple or oaks. The wind was blowing hard. There was no reason for me to be getting pelted by things I, I couldn't even see. Then came then we came to a bunch of sticks mounted up like a bonfire with the X made with branches. But in those days I had no idea about the X markings that they make. I thought it was peculiar because there was just no way these branches fell there on their own to make that X. Just figured someone had been there that wasn't supposed to be at some time. Then I thought my husband was grabbing me around the waist trying to be romantic, but I just wanted to investigate this place and said, to what I thought was him, stop it, not now. I want to look around. Shrugged him off. And again, the same thing, and shrugged him off again. Finally, I turned around to talk to him after just a minute or so, and he was gone. I couldn't find him anywhere. I didn't think that he could have walked away without me knowing because of all the leaves on the ground, and there wasn't any trees big enough for him to hide behind. I didn't know where he went. He didn't answer my calls, and thought maybe he was mad for shrugging him off that wasn't like him to be that way. Maybe I would have, maybe I would have, but not him, lol. Oh, maybe I would have, but not him, lol. Sorry. I was just standing around wondering what I was going to do. Should I go to our vehicle or stay there and wait? I really didn't know how long I was waiting there. I guess I was looking around a bit, thinking about what to do when he showed up. I asked him where he was, but he wasn't talking. Just kind of standing with his head down. I guessed he was mad at me. It wasn't like him at all. So I continued looking around and on a tree was a clump of reddish brown hair. He came over, picked it up and wanted me to touch it, but I didn't want to. I wondered what kind of hair it could be. We don't have bears in the area. And this hair was long, at least four to six inches long. Next thing I know, a huge tree stump stood up and turned around. And yes, I wrote that last sentence correctly, reddish brown hairy fellow. A somewhat human face and big, but he was standing on a down slope. My husband was over six feet tall, and this guy was just as tall or bigger, but he was downhill. I know these beings control our minds because I wasn't even thinking about him being a stump anymore. Said, hello, and who are you? He pointed to his head and said, and mind speak for us to communicate by the mind that way. Not out loud. I believe when you speak out loud, it breaks control, or maybe they don't like noise of us talking, because when I would speak out loud again, he would remind me not to speak and talk out loud. I don't remember who he said he was, or if he did. The name probably didn't make sense to me, but he wanted to know who I was and why I was there, like he owned the place. The property was my family's property for many, many years, and I was thinking, if anybody's leaving here, buddy, it's gonna be you. Still, it wasn't registering in my mind that this was a Bigfoot, Sasquatch, or a Sabbath. It just wasn't in my thoughts at all in those days. I told him in mind speak that I was on my family's property. He wanted to know names. I told him the family name, and he seemed to recognize them. I'm thinking this guy is really rude, but the people in the area don't, didn't know me. I'd only been there a few times in my life. He wanted to know if we were planning to move there. Once at least, I felt that he was trying to hold back being angry. Well, I must have stepped on him or one of his family members that was really soft, and I didn't know it. I heard now that they sleep on the ground under leaves, but I tell you, when I looked down, I saw no one. I just, it just looked like flat ground. Okay, starting to piss rain. And if you guys know tropical places, it's gonna rain like a son of a bee, so I'm gonna have to go and finish this somewhere else. I'm out here, I'll be back shortly. Check it out, I found a shelter right up the rocks. How handy is that? Something's on the screen. Okay, let's keep going. Hopefully it's not too noisy for you guys to hear this. I looked around to see where my husband was and seen he was there with his head down. I looked back and said to him, you're a big guy, aren't you? One comment to me was, you're different than he is, meaning my husband. Then I was able to compare height and size. He was probably 
eight feet tall, three feet wide, burly mountain type, but didn't have a particularly cone type head, just big head, big nose, beard, and hairy. Couldn't make out a neck. I must have looked away at some point. When I looked back, he was just gone. No sound walking away or anything, disappeared. We walked around a little bit more and went back to the vehicle. My husband wouldn't talk about it. Not on the way home or even with me. Wouldn't tell me where he went, what happened, or anything about it. At the time, I just couldn't make sense of what was, of what just happened. Just filed it away somewhere in my head, in the what in the world just happened category. My husband just did not talk about it at all. I had no idea how much time elapsed. Looking back when my husband had disappeared, I think I would have been better off if he would have just kept, if he would have just kept him. LOL, we're divorced now. I should have ran back to the vehicle and left in hindsight, LOL, alcohol, you understand. Number five and number six. Many years later in the year 2000s, I'm divorced at this point, raised my kids, coming home from work at night shift, seeing typical eight foot black gorilla conehead upright type being walking away from, from his backside down the street of my subdivision. And later looking outside my door, some, same type except this one looked like it was more of a chimpanzee type head from a side profile, both in a distance about 300 feet in the dark walking away. And we don't have bears here, none at all. These beings don't all look the same. Through the years, I'm, okay, number seven, extra additional experiences. I'm gonna hurry up, I think all hell's coming. Number seven, extra additional experiences. Through the years here, I've had owl calls. I would return owl calls back thinking it was an owl. One time the owl sounded like it was right on the other side of the wall from me on the outside, right next to where I was sitting. But there was no way an owl could have been perched that near me. I looked outside and saw nothing. The next day in the daylight, I went outside and the owl called to me again. Now I was perplexed, thinking, thinking this just can't be an owl talking to me. There's still no category for me to file that under. So, in the what in the world is that file again? Sometimes I would have banging on my home, but since I've, I lived close to a playground, I always thought it was teenagers in the neighborhood messing with me. I would smell skunk smells at various times outside, day and night, off and on, but never seen a skunk or fox that would cause a smell ever. One night I woke up hearing and feeling like I was behind a jet airplane taking off, even the vibrating. Thought there was something wrong with my head, but then later I heard someone else that had experienced the same thing and think it was a sabe. Never happened again. I had to boot the camera. All hell is coming. <laughs> but I'm gonna get this done. Number eight. I was outside looking under a building, stooped down, and fear came over me, and I saw what was a black snout of like a big dog over my shoulder do like a bluff charge on me and back off. Still trying to overcome the fear feeling. I finally looked back and there was nothing there. No sound or growling. I don't, usually have, I don't usually have fear issues, so in the file of the game. All these extra things would happen on the same side of my home, very small and closed in area. Perfect place to hang out and not be seen by anyone, with plenty of cedar trees around, which is what I've heard they like. Number nine. Last year I was listening quite a bit to Bigfoot Sabe sounds, growls, screams, and yells, just many of them in a short time on my computer. Then without any, then without any storm, I heard the brush of a tree in the back of my home. The next day a neighbor came over and said, did you know a tree fell over toward the top of your home? I looked and sure enough about a six inch thick, very tall cedar tree was broken over and landed in the branches of another tree next to my home. If those branches hadn't stopped it, it would have landed on my home. But this time I knew what was going on. While I was there, I said in my mind, please don't break any more trees. And I heard in my head, okay. I've not heard any more owl calls again that would typically happen in our in winter and early spring. I'm on to them now. And it would seem they did not appreciate the sad bass screaming I've been playing on my computer. So, that's my experience of sad bass so far to date that I remember. But I have had other non sad bass unnormal experiences in my life also. I won't add in here today. Not sure if you want to hear about those. 
I'm trying to refrain from saying, I swear to God this is all true. Because I know that most people on your channel know that these beings are real. But I know the number four is a little out there than what they're used to hearing. These beings are able to control our memory and minds to some extent because most of the time through the years, I didn't even remember, didn't even remember they'd happened. The only time I felt afraid was when I seen the big dog snout. In my opinion, these beings are the mix of the fallen angels with humans spoken of in the Bible of Genesis. And I do know that saying the name of Yeshua slash Jesus does help. They are not normal animals or people. They have a paranormal spiritual side to them. Sometimes people just need to hear other people confirm what they've experienced. They are not a typical human or animal. I think the government must be colluding with paranormal beings, which is why they want to keep them hush-hush. So the question is, what is their plan then? Because we all know things are just getting too weird. I have my beliefs about this as well, and it's not good. Stay safe, Steve. God bless you and Sarah and your animal menagerie. Make a backup channel for your backup channel now so we don't lose you. And I just love that new puppy of yours. She is adorable and getting huge. And your horses too. P.S. Oh, and I remember the lady that said she would marry you in so many ways. That was so cute the way you responded. Oh, well, I wouldn't mind considering you for myself. Easy now. <laughs> You're going to get Sarah after your ass. Anyway, appreciate your time. Appreciate your email. And everybody that just heard that one, take from it what you will and leave it, right? There's no shortage of crazy ass shit going on. And there's no other way to get to the bottom of it than all the people talking to each other, right? It's the only way. It's the only way. Now I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a look at what I'm looking at. <laughs> I don't know how, how long I'm going to hang out here, but it might be a little while. Let's have a look. Hopefully this blows through. I'm lucky. Look at this. Look at this uh, little old deserted shelter thing up here, tight to the rocks. Very handy. Who knows? Maybe we'll get nestled in, and I'll uh, share another one. All right. I'm sitting my ass in the ground. I'm not escaping here anytime soon, so let's keep this ball going. I think I think the audio is probably pretty good. I hate having. The, the more noise behind me, the louder I talk, and I don't really, uh, I don't read that smooth. What's this one? No subjects title this email. Steve, Lord knows if you'll receive this because I've never sent an email before. Old and technologically impaired. I feel the need to let people know that these cryptic can'ts can, don't stay solely in the mountains, national parks, campgrounds, etc. In about 2014, my oldest daughter, grandmother, and I were forced to temporarily stay at the home of my youngest daughter and her husband. Went through a period of extreme bad luck and lost everything. Sorry to hear that. It was one of those periods of time that feels like God has given you a stress test. One evening, my old little dog started barking by the sliding door to the backyard when he did, like he did when he had to go out. This dog is a peek of poo and definitely acted more high strung like a Pekingese. I always said he would bark and nip at the ankles of the devil himself. I'm in a wheelchair, so I asked my nine-year-old granddaughter if she could take my dog out. Being old, he had to be put on a leash, picked up and carried out into the backyard. Now, the major thing I forgot to say is that this house was in a suburb of Cleveland, Ohio. Personally, I didn't care for the area because it was too congested. This is one of those huge neighborhoods. It was built after World War II where houses were crammed together like matchboxes. The street was off a main drag that had elbow to elbow gas stations, banks, fast food joints, and strip mall. The opposite of a natural setup. My granddaughter picked up my picked my dog up and stepped out the door. It seemed like only a few seconds passed and she was right back in the house with the dog still barking. My granddaughter went out and sat down in a chair across from me in the living room and my dog was still having his meltdown by the door to the deck. She had a weird, almost blank look on her face. I asked her what was going on and she said I probably wouldn't believe it. 
I reminded her that we always had our pinky finger packed, and I always believed whatever she had to tell me. She said that when she had stepped out the door onto the back deck, that my dog was going nuts in her arms. She looked, and up on the deck, maybe five to six feet away, was something standing there. She said the only way she could describe it was like a man's body with the head of a dog. I only heard a big foot, so I asked if she was sure that maybe the face looked more like a gorilla or a Neanderthal instead of a dog. And she said absolutely not, and that the head reminded her of a German shepherd. She said it was all black and about seven, eight feet tall. She said the closest thing she could compare it to was one of those Egyptian figures, Nebus, I think, of a man with a dog's head. I don't know where this dog is, barking right here. I knew she would never lie to me or randomly come up with a story like this. My oldest daughter, her mom, and I discussed this whole thing, and we didn't know what in the holy hell this could be. A couple days, a couple days later, my old dog was once again yapping to go out. My daughter started taking him out, especially at night. She came back in and said, well, I saw it. She said that the dog ran over to a section of the backyard and was going nuts. She went over to see what, what he was in a tizzy about and saw he was next to the detached garage and was looking up. My daughter looked up towards the roof of the garage and there this thing was. It was perched on top of the garage like a gargoyle. She snatched up the dog and ran back to the house. My daughter gave an identical description of whatever this thing was, adding that the head looked too big for its body, which made it look awkward. They both said that it had an evil feel to it. Later, my youngest daughter's husband came home from second shift, and she told him what had happened. He immediately went out, and of course, there was nothing out there. He got a ladder out to the garage and climbed up to get a look at the garage roof. Here's where it gets even stranger. He said there were absolutely no marks on the garage roof, and there was snow on all the roofs, and it hadn't snowed at all since this happened earlier that night. To know that snow was pristine on that roof was really creepy. Naturally, he said that they were all nuts, and that that was that. Later, he said that if something had been there, then it was our fault because nothing like that ever happened there before. My daughter, granddaughter, and I now live in the country on 120 plus year old farmhouse on five and a half acres. I think almost every day about what happened, even though I saw nothing myself. I'm so close to my daughter and granddaughter that I know every word of this was true. I've not been able to find any explanation of what they saw. A few years after this happened, I finally heard about Dogman and figured that's what this had to be. It bothers me that it left no physical marks in the snow on that roof. The reason I'm sending you my first email is because people need to know not only that these things are out there, but that they can be anywhere. I listen to podcasts, documentaries, videos, etc. on a daily basis, and 99% of them take place in remote or rural places. People are out hunting, fishing, hiking, camping, or are in a remote country type area when they see these things and not in the urban suburbs of a major city. Sorry for this being so lengthy, but this has been nagging at me for a long time. I don't want people to be lulled into a false sense of security because they are in a crowded, congested area. Thanks for all your efforts to bring truth to the world, and your dedication is endless. When I watch your channel, I know there is worries of BS. I listened to Dave Plytus too, and I've teased him that you guys would make one hell of a presidential team and are exactly what the U.S. and Canada needs to turn things around. Thanks for what you do. All right, thanks for that email. It's a crazy one for most people to hear and wrap their beans around, right? But fact is, this shit's happening all over the frickin' place. Now, it is pissing. <laughs> I hope the audio picked me up okay, because I'm going to use this. I'm stuck. I'm stranded. I'm about six miles from getting back where I'm staying on a busy, congested road with a small motorbike. <laughs> Only me, right? It is coming down. What am I going to do? Alright, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold off and share anymore because I really don't know what the audio is like and I can't stand wasting time. I guess I just get comfortable under here and hang out. And uh, once I get back, I'll load this up and you guys can hear it tomorrow. Keep emailing me, keep emailing me in what you got, you guys. Share my story, how to hunt.com.
Wish me luck. Checking out that discoloration is the uh, the water surging down off the mountain and obviously has some kind of a drain into the ocean. That big discoloration just keeps on surging out. Wow. It is honking out there, pouring off the mountain above. Look at that little waterfall is forming just from that little strip of rock right there. That's it. Crazy.